Today's lesson is going to be one of our most important of the year. It is on Newton's laws, and we're going to be seeing how Newton's laws help to explain the motion of almost every object in our universe. So I'd like to start with Newton's first law. And Newton's first law, I think, can best be illustrated with this video that you're about to watch. This is me in my car heading toward um, Williamstown High School. I've got a Rubbermaid bin with a ball, tennis ball inside. And what you want to do is watch the behavior of the ball. So you can see that as soon as my car started to move forward, it appeared as if the ball rolled backwards in my car. But that's not what actually happened. What actually happened is my car was sitting still and the tennis ball was sitting still. So when the car moved forward, the tennis ball remained at rest and moved to the back of the Rubbermaid bin. Once it hit the back of the Rubbermaid bin, the bin would apply a force to it and make it move forward. But an object that is at rest, like the tennis ball, will stay at rest until it's acted upon by an outside net force. Here's me already going forward. The car, the tennis ball, me. And you'll notice when I jam on the brakes, this time the tennis ball rolls forward. This is because objects that are already moving will want to stay moving in a straight line at a constant speed. So if you draw this time, the bin and the tennis ball are both moving forward. And when the car and the bin stop, the tennis ball goes forward until eventually the bin stops it. An object in motion stays in motion in a straight line at a constant speed until acted upon by an outside force. Okay, the final one, I'm going to be moving forward again at a constant speed, but instead of stopping my car, I'm simply going to make a left-hand turn. And you can see the tennis ball shot to the right. And again, that's a false impression. Inside the car, it looks like it went to the right. But in reality, what happened is when the car turned, the tennis ball continued moving in a straight line. Objects in motion stay in motion in a straight line until eventually they are pushed forward or stopped or forced to change direction by a net outside force. So again, you can see when I turned, you can see how the tennis ball tried to go in the original direction. Okay, so that's Newton's first law. Objects at rest stay at rest. Objects in motion stay in motion in a straight line until either is acted upon by an outside net force. We can think about this with car crashes. So you can imagine a person driving along in their car if the car was to hit something like a tree, everything inside the car continues to move forward until something, hopefully the airbag and seatbelt, bring it to rest. Objects at rest, like at a red light, are going to want to stay at rest. So if this car is hit from behind, the car gets pushed forward, your body tries to stay at rest. So take a look at these. Here's a car with some crash test dummies crashing into a barrier. And when you watch it in slow motion, you can see how everything in the car continues to move forward until eventually stopped by a net force from the airbags or the seat belt. It's very important that you realize these safety systems are built into the car to save our lives. Newton's laws say that we're going to continue to move forward when that car stops. So these safety devices are the only thing that's going to stop us safely. Here we have a person just sitting still in a car. They'll be hit from behind like at the red light. And if you watch their head, you'll see how the whole car moves forward. Their head tries to stay at rest 
And if they have their headrest up, the headrest will push their head forward safely. Without that headrest, the person's head would whiplash and they'd possibly damage their neck. Okay, so you wanna make sure your headrest is there for when you have collisions from behind and your seatbelt and your airbags are there in case your car stops suddenly. So here's a quick video illustrating Newton's first law. And you'll notice this is just a car out on a roadway and the roadway happens to be covered in ice. When a roadway is covered in ice, we cannot generate much force. Okay, and without a lot of force, we're not going to be able to get our car to stop whatever it was originally doing. So if the car is at rest, it's going to stay at rest, even though the tires are spinning, because it can't get any net force from the roadway without friction. Here's a car that's in motion, and it can't use friction to stop. So the car continues to move forward until it hits another object. You see this person desperately trying to create an outside net force and they're unable to do so until the car is hit by another car. So let's take a moment and make sure you understand net means total force. So if you have one force up and one force down that cancel, that's just like having no force at all. And outside means that the force has to come from something outside of the object. The car cannot stop itself it needs friction with the roadway to bring it to rest. Outside means a force coming from some object other than the original object that was moving or at rest. Okay, so that was Newton's first law. Newton's third law is also non-mathematical. And Newton's third law says that every force you apply to an object, that object will apply an equal and opposite force to you. It's the law of equal and opposite forces. So if we have Homer Simpson using a rope to pull down this tree, he would apply a force to the right and the tree would apply a force on his bumper to the left. Equal and opposite forces. Every time you try to apply a force to one object, that object will apply a force back on you of the same strength, but in a different direction. The opposite direction. Okay, so you can see here we have a person getting hit with a pillow. So the pillow applies a force to them and they would apply a force back to the pillow. Equal and opposite forces. Here we have a spaceship trying to lift up the Simpson family. And you see the spaceship lifting them off of the ground. And when it tries to lift Homer, we can see really well the third law. As the spaceship pulls up on Homer, Homer pulls down on the spaceship. Equal and opposite forces.